Welcome to the 39th tutorial on beginning Java. In this video, we're going to look at abstract classes and abstract methods. And what I've done here is I've set up a super class in mammal and then some subclasses in human and whale. And they are, of course, flavors of a mammal. So first thing I'm going to do is talk about some of the rules that are associated with abstract classes and abstract methods. And then I'm going to talk about why we use abstract methods and classes. And then in the next video, I'm going to tie it all together with interfaces. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a abstract method first. Okay, and so what is common to mammals? Well, they all have hair. So let's make a hair method. Now, you're going to notice something different here right off the top of the bat. This is going to be a blank method. That is the way an abstract method is done. It is blank. We fill in the details later, and I'll, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's always a blank method that is followed by a semicolon. Notice we're not using brackets here. So, again, we're just setting up the method name almost in a way. And we're giving the keyword here of abstract. Now you'll notice I got an IntelliSense. Take a look at that. And that says mammal is not abstract and does not override abstract method. Here, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, well that's a fancy way of saying, guess what? If we have a abstract method, you must have a abstract class. So this class now has to be abstract. So that's the first rule. If we're going to make an abstract method, we must make the class abstract as well. So we put that in here, and you notice the IntelliSense goes away. So that's rule number one. Well, actually, rule number two, because we talked about this method having to be empty. And let's uh, go ahead and what's another common characteristic for mammals? Let's talk about um, mammals have to breathe air. So we'll just put in here breathe. And so there's another abstract method. And let's just go ahead and open up app.java. Actually, we used that from the previous video, but we can get rid of all of this now uh, when we were talking about polymorphism. So we'll just use that. And we got to get rid of some of these brackets. And I think we're good to go. So let's go ahead and now try to create an object based off of our mammal superclass. And we'll do that in our app.java, which of course contains our main method. So let's just do so let's just do mammal new obj equals new mammal and semicolon. And that is the third rule. You cannot instantiate or create an object off an abstract class. This prevents it. And so the compiler will complain about this. He will not allow you to do that. And that is the basic concept. When you tag a class as abstract, you cannot instantiate from it. So you might ask the question, how do we get to these methods then? If we can't create an object off of it, how do we get to these? Well, we have to extend off of the superclass from our subclasses. And so let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll get rid of this because we know we can't do that. And so we, now we have to actually extend off of there. So we're going to say extends mammal and actually we put a v in there by mistake there we go and we'll also do the same thing off of human and you see we get some intellisense and here's the other rule whale is not abstract and does not override abstract method breathe in mammal what on earth does that mean well, what this means is, is if you put abstract methods in your superclass, you must, you must use them in your subclass. It is not a choice. The compiler will throw an error. That is what this whole deal means. You are basically saying you must implement these in all the subclasses that extends off the superclass mammal. And so that is why this is throwing an error because we have not created those methods yet. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and create the breathe method. And we'll just copy and paste here. And you notice the error went away. Take a look at that. It's gone. And basically the compiler doesn't even care that we don't have any code in here. You notice that? It just wants a method with this method name, this method name breathe to match what is in here. These two abstract methods. Once that's done, the compiler is now happy. And let's just go ahead and copy and paste these over into our human class. And there we see the error is gone over here. So that is the deal. We must 
implement these into our subclasses no matter what. Think of it like a contract. It's a contract. The contract is, if you mark these abstract, the methods, you must, according to the contract, put these in all of the subclasses that inherit off of MAML. Now the next question you're going to ask is, why on earth do we do this? Well, that's a very good question. And it all starts with why we tagged this MAML class as abstract. Now, I want you to think for a second. Have you guys ever seen a mammal walking down the street? Well, probably not. Is a mammal an object? Is that something you can actually see? Not really, right? It has some characteristics that are common to all of its subclasses, like whale. I mean, whales have hair and they breathe, and humans have hair and they breathe too. But mammal is just an abstract term. It's not an actual object that we can interact with. And that's why I marked this abstract. I don't want any objects created off of this because it doesn't exist in reality. We just want to take some of the methods, some of the behaviors and attributes that exist in it, and we can use it for the more specific subclasses because these are common to whales and humans, but we don't actually want to create an object from this, and so I'm going to prevent that. But I do want whales and humans to go ahead and inherit these methods. Now, take a look at this if you think about this for a second. So again, these are always blank, and then we fill in all the details in here. And it's almost like I said, it's a contract. It's a protocol. You are basically telling everybody that's going to inherit off of MAML will build their objects from these subclasses, and they will always have these methods because these methods will always have these characteristics, hair and breathe, in every single type of subclass that we create off of MAML. And so again, it's like a protocol and you will force that. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We can actually go ahead and create non-abstract methods. So I can go ahead and create a non-abstract method in here and call this swim. And what's neat about this is, what does that mean? Well, it means I don't have to implement this. This one is not marked as abstract. So I can put these in either whale or human or whatever subclass that I desire to. In this case, we're going to go ahead and put this in the whale subclass because whales swim. Now, some humans swim, but not all. So I'm not going to put that in the human subclass. And so let's go ahead and create something that's unique to humans. And what do humans do? They all walk. Well, at least most of them do. So uh, let's go ahead and put that there and now we will put this over into the human subclass and we are not obligated to go ahead and put this in the whale subclass. Now the one thing also I want to point out is that you will notice that in these abstract methods that we created here we are actually overriding these, right? It's kind of the same thing as overriding. The only difference is we're being forced to override these. So this hair method is actually overriding what's in the mammal. We're just forced to do it. And again, it doesn't matter. You don't even have to put anything in here. But Java just needs to find that hair method. Okay, so I hope that explained how abstract methods and abstract classes work. Now I'm going to stop right here because I need to tie this in with interfaces. And we're going to do that in the next video. So actually save all of this stuff that you've created here because we're going to use this in the next video. And we're going to tie it all together with interfaces. And then you guys will be experts in how to use interfaces and abstract classes. And by the way, that is how most large programs are used. A lot of them will use interfaces and abstract classes. So I will see you guys in the next video.